Die nächste Gesellschaft wird die Click Digital AG sein. Schaltet sich auch gleich der Vorstand zu. Sorry. Good morning. Good morning, Mr. Boss. Hello. How are you today? I'm fine. Thank you. Okay. Ähm, ja, kurze Anmoderation für die Click Digital AG, zugeschaltet aus Düsseldorf, nehme ich mal an, Mr. Ben Boss, Vorstand der Gesellschaft. Ich glaube, alle Aktionäre der Click Digital sind zufrieden mit dem Kursverlauf der letzten Zeit. Ja, was kommt danach noch? Wie wird das Jahr 2021? Wie ist der Ausblick? Sehen Sie heute die Präsentation von Mr. Boss. Wenn Sie Ihren Bildschirm teilen, bitte, please, uh, to share the screen. Ja. Yeah. Wunderbar. Does it work? Yes. Ja, Sie können starten. Okay. Well, uh, good morning to all of you. Um, let me first uh, introduce myself, Ben Boss. I'm a member of the board since 2014. I'm responsible for finance, legal, M&A, uh, corporate markets and investor relations. Just uh, to start with, um, a quick overview on uh, last year's results and on the last seven years. We performed the 107 million euros of uh, growth revenues up by 69% on the full year 2020 versus 2019 with 16 million euros of EBDA. Um, over the last seven years, we already performed a 47% uh, KGAR on net results. But if we take out the astonishing uh, year of 2020, we already did the 30% for the last six years. So as of 2014 to 2019. Uh, we do employ over 100 employees. Um, with 29 different nationalities as we are performing our business in over 30 countries. We have offices as said, and just announced and of course headquartered in Dusseldorf, main operation in Amsterdam. I'm Dutch, you probably can hear that. Uh, but we also have an, an office in London, Paris, Barcelona and Florida. We are leading lifestyle company providing members worldwide with streaming entertainment services. So the market where in which we operate uh, recently have been uh, um, forecasted at uh, 440 billion uh, euros of uh, revenue, uh, dollars, I must say, of revenue in 2025. Um, recently still forecasted at 255 billion. We in specific markets in the streaming services, we also see that actually um, good growth rates and KGARs up to 2027, starting at 12.9% uh, for games, up to 24% in audiobooks. If you look to the evolution of Click, in the past, uh, the organization has been selling uh, products like the joke of the day, uh, ringtones via uh, advertisement on television uh, and via direct marketing. The consumer was charged over via premium SMS, uh, so direct carrier billing, and the product was delivered of a single platform. And nowadays, we are uh, selling a full multi-content multi store, including movies, audiobook series, sports, music, and games. And we are uh, promoting our, our product uh, via direct media buying, um, which we do ourselves on the internet. We charge the consumer, or we can build the consumer now via multiple uh, billing methods, like credit cards, still also uh, the previous use to direct carrier billing, which is still in use for about 25 to 30% of our revenues, app store billing, uh, and um, other payment methods. We distributed the product over multi-platform, actually any internet-enabled device. Where are we heading for the future? Global rollout of multi-branded and multi-content portals, 
improved portfolio and additional categories and increased content. More localized content for our members, but also producing original hosted and presented content. Further on, enhancing seamless customer journeys by adapting new digital payment solutions. We keep on going with our dynamic billing models in the different countries and the increased customer satisfaction. This is um, our product, which you see on clickdigital.com, multi-content for everyone. Uh, it gives you an unlimited access to a fast selection of streaming content like movies, music, sports, body books, and games. If we go to the specifics of this portal, um, on each individual content category, uh, which are now accounted for five in total, it's all licensed content. So it's all indexed and relatively to our revenues. Um, like uh, music, we just pay a member fee uh, to our licensor. And with all your books, we typically pay uh, after 10 minutes of uh, consumer listening into one of the audio books. So, um, excuse me for the uh, background noise. Uh, we recently, in the first quarter, added Hollywood blockbusters also to our movies uh, uh, portfolio, as well as we did um, uh, added an additional category games uh, for um, the complete portal. So we now do have five categories in our all over portal. If you look to the price point comparison in the German market, we see that we are well priced with a 49.9 and 49.99 for the whole product on a monthly basis, which gives you also uh, a blockbuster, a Hollywood blockbuster per month. Uh, and if you compare that to uh, the other providers in the market, you only see Amazon Prime uh, offering a complete palette of uh, content to the consumers, whereby if you like to enjoy all the um, content uh, in a month with Amazon, you easily end up by paying them over 40 euros. It goes without saying that with each individual uh, category, if you like to um, subscribe to Spotify, Netflix, uh, uh, Deezer, or uh, ESPN, you easily add up uh, to uh, 50, 60 euros on a monthly basis. So we are addressing actually members which are very value oriented and avoid buying things they consider too expensive. So it's affordable uh, services for the mass market. It's a one-stop shop with a comprehensive multi-content offering and uh, other member friendly features. If we look to our members, they are often uh, male between 35 and 55 years old. And there are, uh, we do expect to get more female uh, audience in as we just uh, entered or added an, the games category to our portal. Uh, up to five uh, people within the household can make use uh, for the 49.99 of our services. If we look to our marketing, uh, here we do it different uh, than our uh, colleagues in the market, which are often uh, branding their name, uh, like the Netflix, like the Spotify. We are making use of the direct marketing method. Uh, and on this page, we see and enjoy the customer journey um, with an example. If people uh, click on follow your passion, uh, which is on the left side, and you see the, uh, the advertisement, which you typically uh, advertise around the game between, um, uh, for instance, between uh, Barcelona and Madrid. Um, if people are interested uh, in this offering, and uh, we do expect two to three percent of the people subscribing to our service who are clicking on our advertisement, they see the next page coming up and that they see that they get, get for the same price also access to the music, audiobooks, the movies, and the games. Once we, uh, once we check if they were credited, or are credit worthy, they get a free trial for um, a certain period on our services, which they can enjoy. We uh, call this direct impulse marketing, and we typically advertise our five search engines, social media, uh, but also big publishers and other channels. Um, the efficiency of our marketing is, um, is what we call uh, quite high as we do expect on every euro marketing we uh, we uh, we spent that we uh, expect a return of at least 30% on this how do we do this how do we measure this well we can of course 
um, immediately after placing an ad on the web, we can calculate the CPA, the so-called cost per member acquisition. In this example set at 50 euros. Once people subscribe to our services, our BI tool, our business intelligence tool, immediately shakes out the six months revenue uh, for that services. Um, in this sample set at 75 euros. If you divide the 75 by the 50 euros, you have a multiplier, which in this case uh, comes out on the 1.5, which actually means with every euro marketing spend we do, we do expect within six months time a revenue uh, to realize at one euro 50. So the 75 is the average revenue per member for a six months period. Of course, we can determine this also for other periods, but this is set in-house uh, for six months to realize at least a 30%, which equals to a multiplier of 1.4. Um, if our marketeers comes below that factor, uh, be below that uh, multiplier, then they need to take off the, uh, offline their uh, campaign. So uh, in other words, more marketing, more members, more revenue. Uh, we performed an 80 million euros of uh, marketing alone in 2018 and last year uh, went up to 34 million euros. We do expect this year to perform a marketing of 46 million in total, uh, but last year came in with a very different, uh, uh, very decent multiplier of 168. So with every euro marketing spend we did, we realized 1 euro 68 of net revenue within the six months thereafter. Uh, also in this graph, you see the shift which we made in 2019 uh, and which uh, actually really took off in 2020. And that's the shift between the direct media buying and the affiliate marketing. In the past, we've been using the media agencies, the affiliate marketers, um, but nowadays we are much more making use of our own media buying team, which all now accounts for over 60% of all our media spent, uh, which is more lucrative as we basically cut out the middleman and we can direct and, and steer our campaigns more uh, effectively. Um, the customer base value, so we do not announce any number of uh, members um, which we have on hand, but we do have a put a value on it because with the same BI tool, which I just spoke about for our marketing efforts, we see that we, uh, can, multi that we can calculate the value of that, um, actually of the customer base, which we do by the number of members multiplied by remaining a lifetime value per member which came in at 35 million euros by the end of 2020. This is an off balance sheet item. So it's not sitting on our balance sheet, but it's the expected net revenue for the coming period after the year end. If we look to the financials on the key factors of 2020, um, we see uh, again, an, uh, an, an 107 million euros, which we just uh, seen on the, one of the first pages is a marketing spend of 34 million and an EBDA margin, which I like to mention of 15%. But if you look to more to the right side of this page, you see in Q4 that we already performed a 70% of marketing spent alone in Q of um, EBDA margin, apologies, uh, in Q4 alone. So it means that we are highly scalable. The more marketing we do, the more revenue we can do and the more scalable and more margin we can realize. The EPS came in by 1 euro 16 um, for the year 2020. Uh, but if we make the math and the calculations on the recently announced transaction, which we did, we bought out some minority shareholders in one of our subsidiaries. If we recalculate that transaction for last year, our pro forma EPS came in by 1 euro 50 already. Where did we? realize our revenue or do we realize the, the majority of our revenue it's a good split between uh, europe and uh, and the us or north america i would say it's about 50 50 uh europe, us came in by 52 million euros alone over 2020 versus the 9 million they did in we did in 2019 due to the fact that we deployed our own media buying team for the first time in 2020 uh of, on the us continent the rest of the world is uh, Middle East and South Africa, and Europe came in by 48 million. If we look to the uh, quarterly development over the last um, over the last uh, eight quarters, 
you'll see them greatly uh, increasing marketing spend. Again, more marketing means more revenue uh, and at the end, more EBDA. And here's, you also see a clear overview on our scalability. Uh, starting, uh, let's say, in Q2 2019 by 10%. Uh, the green balloon uh, on this graph, up to the 70% for the Q4 2020, which came in by 5.1 million euros of EBDA. Uh, net debt and cash flow. Uh, we started the year 2020 with a net debt of 9.6 million, uh, with a free cash flow of 10.5 million. We were able to finish the year with a small cash position of almost 1 million euros. Uh, and we uh, took into consideration, if you take into consideration, I would say the 2 million uh, of different which we uh, paid last year, uh, the free cash flow would have been uh, over 12 million, exactly 12.6 million for the year 2020. But still, we can tap into a nice uh, syndicated loan if we need to uh, with uh, Commerzbank uh, for 13.5 million with an um, uh, interest rate between 2 and 2.9%. If you look to the balance sheet, um, 77 million in total with an equity of 55 million. So a um, um, nice equity ratio. If you take out the cash and the bank, bank borrowings and you net it to this uh, 900,000 uh, of cash, we would have ended by 73 million of total assets and equity liabilities. Well, the announcement earlier, um, uh, or last week, I would say, on um, Hype Ventures. So we bought uh, the remaining shares of this subsidiary. We already had 80% in our position. And uh, this subsidiary was also providing streaming entertainment services to members worldwide. We, uh, we valued the, the subsidiary at 90 million, uh, although they did 59% of our uh, revenues, of the, the group revenues, for 2020, and um, it's further increasing this year. We do expect them to do about 70% of the total group revenues. What's the rationale behind it? Achieve greater operational flexibility. Flexibility. We can sh shift our staff much easier between the different subsidiaries, improve the corporate governance, and uh, realize material efficiency enhancements. Uh, and of course, uh, more important, we sustainably generate significantly higher EPS uh, on net results. Um, how did we, uh, what was the consideration? 320,000 uh, shares in total to be issued to the sellers. Uh, that will probably happen uh, somewhere uh, this week or next week. Everything is with the commercial register. And we uh, also agreed to have an electron period uh, uh, for circa three years. Um, they are entitled to uh, for different on those shares as of uh, um, actually as of next year, because this year's dividend payment has been done. Six million of cash component and an 800,000 of um, earnout. Um, here again, you see the, the mass, which we did uh, about uh, 6 million, 6.5 million shares then outstanding after the issuance. And that means uh, one euro 50 of EPS uh, if we would have done this deal for last year. So this is pro forma calculation on 2020 uh, results. So 30% higher uh, EPS. We look to the, uh, the outlook. Um, sustainable revenue growth in existing and new geographies, customer satisfaction and brand equity, increasing conversion with our direct marketing expertise, with our uh, direct media buying team, uh, improving the course content and adding new categories and taking an opportunistic approach to non-organic growth. Specifically here, we have been uh, uh, compiling a long list of uh, possibilities of companies which we are looking at, which we uh, could uh, maybe include in, uh, within the click group. Uh, we are not looking at the US, those companies are too expensive but we see some uh, decent, decent opportunities in the European uh, market uh, specifically. If we look to the uh, growth drivers, a strong market development um, for streaming entertainment services, uh, improved technologies and a growing demand uh, by consumers for affordable streaming services. On-demand consumption of content, 
and uh, we see also, of course, the change in uh, behavior of uh, consumers, which uh, like much more to uh, enjoy uh, content whenever they like to do themselves and wherever they are. So first is the linear program programming of uh, television. So how do we uh, tap into their ourselves? More marketing by our own media buying team. We will add additional payment means, especially specifically when we uh, go to new geographies like Latin America and Southeast Asia, we probably do need more payment means, bold on acquisition, content and streaming entertainment services, and improving a set and adding new content categories. Um, also, we most likely will uh, target new audiences due to our new content categories, like the recently added uh, uh, gaming uh, category in our portal. If we look to specifically to the guidance for this year, uh, last year 107 million came in. We do expect to do over 140 million of growth revenue this year with at least 22 million euros of EBDA. There's a margin of 16% and a marketing spend of 46 million, which is one of our main KPIs and, and revenue driver. There was a click factor coming in at slightly lower than last year on 1.6. Reasons to invest, the equity story, a future-proof and highly scalable and resilient business model, addressing a fast-growing mass market globally, and a dual-track grow, uh, growth strategy, organic and non-organic expansion. All in one product portfolio, which builds brand equity, stay on and keep on being a direct marketer with excellent member conversion rates, making use of our own proprietary business intelligence from big data and algorithms. Um, finalizing our tactical transformation in media buying and payment means and keep on being a solid with our solid financials and different being a different distributor. Thank you for listening. And um, I believe we uh, got some uh, questions via the chat, um, but I don't know you, uh, how we like to how you like to take this. Thank you, Mr. Boss, for the interesting presentations. As you already said, we have 10 minutes for questions. So I would say we start with the first. Uh, where can we find the Click Digital offer in the US? Can you give a link or a name of a service partner? Uh, well, we, we currently have, uh, we are working on, on clickdigital.com to be launched in the US. Uh, further, we have uh, multiple um, URLs which we are using in our dynamic. Uh, um, uh, offering in the US, meaning that every single portal which we are selling there has a different look and feel, and therefore we can also uh, um, um, uh, those services for different pricing. So our pricing starts at uh, $49.99 and goes easily up to $29, depending on the demand. Uh, in this way, we are flexible and also flexible in steering our profitability. Uh, specific uh, URLs, um, please refer to uh, Sebastian, our head of IR, um, and we will discuss that at a later stage. Uh, I don't have them so on hand uh, here at this moment. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. The next question the next is, question. Uh, why, I, why are your app downloads near zero in the App Store? Can you give us an explanation? Why we are, sorry, not? Why are your app downloads near zero in the App Store? Now, well, uh, first of all, the, uh, um, as we all probably know, is that the, the, the um, App Store takes, or Apple, but also uh, the other providers are taking 30% of our revenue, which is a greater part of uh, the 40.99, which we are asking for. And we are using uh, the app only for um, the services. So once you are subscribed, you can have access to the app. So you cannot uh, subscribe to the app itself. So you have to go via the internet. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question is the number of subscriptions in Germany. Yeah, we, we do not give specific uh, numbers um, on uh, subscriptions in each individual country. We do have the customer base value available, which came in by 35 million euros. Uh, by the end of last year, uh, because this is a much more accurate number than just giving uh, numbers on subscriptions 
uh, to the market because you easily can uh, get a lot of subscriptions in in different markets uh, across the globe uh, for very little money but it doesn't say anything on what kind of revenue you can realize so the value of our customer base is for us uh, much more uh, credit worthy than just mentioning an, a number of uh, of members which we have on hand however we are considering because we know that other providers are releasing those numbers um, on a global scale or on, on, on a continental basis and uh, we are currently also uh, considering if we will come up with those figures going forward. As soon as we will, of course, we will announce this uh, publicly and to the market at the same time. Okay, thank you. Mr. Kern asks, why haven't we seen any growth in Europe in 2020? Um, that's a good question, and thank you for that. Um, while we changed the way we, um, or we changed, we, we start working with our own media buying team in the US for the first time. So we specifically decided to go to the US uh, in, uh, uh, first before going into Europe, uh, as Europe is much more fragmented. So in, in the US, we could do with one product uh, and could address the market quite easily and making use of our media buying team. So they could buy uh, media with Google, with Facebook and other big publishers on a uh, much bigger scale than uh, to do this over in, within Europe, because there you have to go country by country and much more fragmented. Um, we, of course, uh, now also decided to build our own media buying team, partly using uh, our team from the, for the US, but also uh, adding uh, members or uh, staff to our team uh, for the European market. So you will soon see that also Europe will start growing again. Okay, thank you. Now we have some questions in Germany. I hope it is not a problem for you. And Please go ahead. Okay. Sind M&As auch künftig ein wesentliches Element der Wachstumsstrategie? Um, yeah, uh, if I, can I answer in, uh, in English? Um, of course. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Yes, uh, M&A is, uh, of course, an important element going forward. However, uh, for this year, the 140 million, which is our guidance, is without adding uh, and organically other companies uh, to our services. So uh, that would be on top. Um, so also going forward, uh, the estimations which we have seen so far from our analysts, uh, which we see, uh, uh, yeah, dual house as... Uh, possible to achieve for 2022 and 2023. Um, even Luke and myself have, an, an, uh, so Luke is the CEO of the company. Uh, we have our personal ambition to grow the company with at least 250 million euros of growth revenue uh, for the coming two to three years. This is not an official guidance of the company, but it's a personal ambition um, whereby we see this uh, to be achieved without further uh, major acquisitions. Thank you. And die letzte Frage wäre: Aktuell dominiert das EU und das US-Geschäft. Welche Bedeutung hat allgemein der asiatische Markt für die Click-Gruppe? Um, can you, sorry, one more time on the asiatische Gruppe? Sorry. Welche Rolle spielt der asiatische Markt für die Click-Gruppe? Wollen Sie dort oh, explodieren? Okay. Das ist die Frage. Okay, thank you so much. Now, for this moment, uh, we do not uh, do any business in Asia. Uh, however, we are investigating whether we should launch our services either in this year in uh, uh, Latin America or in Asia. Uh, so that would be, the, in, of course, in the second half of this year, whether it will be the third quarter or the fourth quarter and which continent, I cannot elaborate yet on it, but for sure we will expand Uh, on the next content going forward. Okay, thank you. There are no further questions now. So I will okay. thank you for the Q&A and the presentation. And I hope we see you again here in Munich next year. Okay. Thank you so much for uh, moderating and having us. Yeah, and thanks for, thank you all for listening in and for the good questions. Thank you so much. Bye. Bye-bye. So here you.